stopped and I got like three minutes of recording. I'm not seeing it still going here. So does anybody know, we, are we good? I just hit the button. All right, it better record. I don't see any blue blinky that Don said to look for. Because I got burned last year, it didn't record, so. All right, hopefully it works this time. Okay, Active Directory desired state configuration. How many of you have Active Directory in your environment? <laughs> oh, nice, all right, you came to the same place. All right. How many have an Active Directory test lab in your environment? Nice, all right, that's, that's better than average. You guys are above average here. How many have llamas in your data center? All right, I'm not going to talk about long-listed data. All right, let's talk about Active Directory and DSC. Um, that's my stuff up there. Go TPFE. If you search anywhere online, you'll find me. All right, let's dive in. And, yes, thank you. Applause to all the guys who made this possible for the last 10 years. Yes, all right. Okay, here's the problem. I'm a Microsoft Premier Field Engineer, and I visit Premier customers and help them with their Active Directory. That's kind of what I've done for years. And most of those customers do not have an Active Directory test lab. So what I'm going to show you today is how to spin up your own Active Directory test lab in 30 minutes. All right? That's mostly just wait time. It takes you just a minute to run the script. It's, it's going to be about 30 minutes and you're going to have your own domain controller spun up in Azure that you can just destroy, do whatever you want, you want to against it. And then at the end of the day, just delete it and you're done. So you can have an on-demand domain controller to beat up anytime. Just run the script. That's what we're going to do today. Does that sound like fun? Yep. All right. So that was my goal then. I wanted to be able to deploy an Active Directory test lab to Azure, including, because, you know, this DSC stuff, usually somebody just spins up a server. But I want to actually put OUs. And in those OUs, I wanted users and groups. And I wanted to enable the AD recycle bin, you know, do some AD configuration. And then I wanted it to be as simple as running a script. And I did not want to have to open Visual Studio. Because I'm not a big Visual Studio person, right? I'm an infrastructure guy. I don't do, I'm an ops. I'm not a dev on that side of the equation. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and we are going to do this live right here today. So I've got some uh, code. I've done my login to Azure RM. I'm going to come back and show you how this works. I'm going to create a couple of variables here that are going to define the name of my resource group. And then I'm going to just do a quick check to make sure that that DNS name is available. There's no conflict. There shouldn't be. There aren't that many GoTee instances out on Azure. And then I'm going to spin up my Azure resource group. That one takes just a second to run. That's good. And that, just like that, I created an, a new Azure resource group. Now I'm just going to define a couple parameters, which are mostly variables already done here. I'm going to go ahead and run those. And now the big line right here, new Azure RM resource group deployment. I'm just passing in the splat of parameters. And let's go ahead and run that line as well. This is the part, all right, it's going to ask me for my password. Make sure I remember this power thing. All right, password, got it. What? Man, oh man. Guys, I have done this a million times, and the only reason it's failing is because I'm in front of all of you right now. All right. What's going on here? Yeah, it is, but it's all lowercase. Well, that that one particular piece. Yeah, you know what? I've I've run this a million times, just like it is. Oh, okay. Yep, it is because I did change one last thing last night after I ran my demo. East. Uh, East US. You're right. I did change that little spot after my demo practice last night. That was a bad thing on my part. Now let's try it again. There we go. All right. Come on, baby. Got the dash verbose in there, so it gives me the play by play. All right. So what's happening now is I'm actually spinning up. I've got a new Azure resource group that I created. Now I'm actually deploying 
to that Azure resource group a single domain controller, all the storage and networking, everything that goes with it. And uh, it's going to have a DSC configuration that I designed that was custom for Active Directory. Uh, for my domain controller, the data that I wanted to go in there, and that's what I'm going to show you now is how that works. There we go. Get my prompt here. I want to make sure this gets off and running because, okay, now we're good. So we're creating a template deployment now for Alpine Ski House Forest. I'm tired of using Contoso.com, anybody else? Alpine Ski House is one of the other legal approved Microsoft and fictitious company names. So Alpine Ski House sounds like a lot more fun than Contoso. So let's get back to the presentation. We'll come back and see this in a minute. So you came to talk about Active Directory DSC. This is the X Active Directory resource module that you can get at PowerShell Gallery or you can go look at it on GitHub. And in that module, there are a number of resources. Now, how many have used this in DSC already? Anybody? Just a couple of hands? Okay. So the main thing to understand here is the difference between XAD domain and XAD domain controller. XAD domain is going to be the first DC in the environment. Every other DC after that in the same domain is going to be an XAD domain controller. All right. And then X wait for AD domain says, once I've done the install, I need to make sure that it's come up and it's responding. So that's the wait. And then once that wait is successful, I can contact the domain. Then I can go ahead and do my other uh, resources here, like domain trust, organizational units, users, groups, and so forth. Um, so those are the resources we have today in that module. It's bare minimum at this point. It's been out there for a year and a half or so. We've, uh, we've got a little bit of traction out there, but there's some other things in process. The last I checked on GitHub, there's a default domain policy uh, out there that's uh, getting ready to be released soon. Also, we're actually looking for people to help build this out. So if you do some AD PowerShell and you'd like to help us uh, add some resources here, we'd like to do a resource for just a generic Active Directory object or setting permissions on something in Active Directory. Tons of things we can add to this, you know, sites and subnets, all that stuff. Uh, so feel free to go out there to GitHub, take a look at it, and uh, see where you can jump in and help. So there's one person I would really like to thank, and that's Ian Brighton. This is the uh, stats off of GitHub. Um, Ian has done the most work on this module in the community. So a uh, big shout out to Ian for all of his work helping us move forward with the X Active Directory resource module. So uh, what we're doing today is deploying a domain controller using what's called Azure Resource Manager templates. How many have heard of that before? Okay. And basically, instead of going and clicking through the Azure portal to do your resource deployment, your, you, you've got to spin up compute and storage and and uh, you know unicorns and fairies and all that in Azure to make everything work right. And you can do that with code, obviously, because uh, we're all PowerShell people in here. But it's really easy now with Azure templates. You just say, give me one of these, and it just gives you all that stuff. It just does automatically all the storage and the compute and the network and all that. Just builds it all up for you. And that's, that's what I've been waiting on. See, now we're there. So I don't have to worry about knowing all the ones and zeros of everything I have to set up. So we've also, we've got that that we're using, uh, and I used, a, I cheated like everybody else. Hey, you know, when you write a script, what do you do? You go look on the internet, find somebody else that did it, and then you start with that, right? So I just went out to GitHub. There's an Azure RM section out on GitHub where we've published these resource templates, and sure enough, there's one there for a domain controller. So I started with that. And then I snagged the latest Active Directory module here, X Active Directory, from the, uh, PowerShell Gallery, and then I went out and watched Trevor Sullivan's video on doing Azure template deployments with PowerShell, some um, presentation he did over in Europe. Everybody know Trevor Sullivan, MVP? Yep, all right. So um, and whenever, he did a really good job on that video. And then I did the phone a friend thing and all that and talked to some of my buddies and kind of put this, hack this thing together. So here are the challenges I ran into deploying a domain controller uh, using this technique. Well, number one, the the template that was out there on the Azure uh, resource templates was kind of dated. 
It used the, an old version, an old stale version of the X Active Directory resource module. It didn't have all the, the new bells and whistles. Um, it, it still was using the X Disk uh, DSC resource which, module, which has been uh, deprecated now. Um, and it's now in X Storage, and then there's the X Networking was outdated. So I basically, I found this template that I could use, but it was way out of date. I needed to fix it up. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to put my own domain controller DSC configuration in there. I didn't want to take the one that was in the template. I wanted to write my own, put that up in there as well. And then I, what I also learned was that when I was trying to pass parameters in with the Azure template, it uses a JSON. And when I was trying to pass an array, I couldn't figure out how to get the array to go through in a JSON parameter. Maybe some of you guys know that. Uh, but I couldn't figure that out. So, but it was better, it was cleaner. Instead, if I could just put my configuration script in one file and my PSD configuration data file for DSC in another separate file, it has all my AD configuration information in it. So those two files plus the Azure JSON stuff. So here's the process. I installed that um, X Active Directory resource module on a VM to start testing with. I wrote and tested my AD DSC configuration, how I wanted it to build. I, I just tested that on a local VM, just getting my configuration tuned the way I wanted. And then I basically took the ARM template that I found out on GitHub and I just mashed those two together. And this, this was a lot of mashing to make that stuff work right. Uh, but I basically took my configuration, mashed it up together with that template, and there are just a couple files there. So there's something called Azure Deploy.json, which is what the Azure Resource Manager commandlet uses to go find the information, where to point things, and what values you're going to pass in, things like that. Then there's a zip file. How many have done the Azure DSC extension? Have you worked with that? And when you publish a DSC configuration to Azure, there's this zip file that it builds. All, all that is is a PS1 script file holding your DSC configuration script and then zipped up in there are the resource module folders that need to be installed on that target uh, machine. And then there's a configuration data file. How many have done DSC with a configuration data file? Right, or you use the dash configuration data when you build a DSC, right? You pass that in. So this is just that, that's a hash table file. It's got all my parameters in there. So that's, those are the files that are hosted out on GitHub. And um, by the end of the session, you'll be able to go out to GitHub and take the exact same files that I published out there, download it on one file out of that GitHub repository to your machine and run it and build a domain controller 10 times a day if you want it in your own instance of Azure. You can also use that code as a reference template for just how do I do a domain controller with DSC. And that's what we're going to get into in just a second here when we start looking at the code. So then I deployed this template to Azure. And did it work the first time? No. So it's fail, tweak, fail, tweak, fail, tweak, bashing head on keyboard until finally it works and success. Yeah, all right. So that's, right, that's how we script, right? We, we just keep trying until it works, and then we you know, fist bump, right? So. Yeah. So let's take a look then at the actual files behind this. this let's get this. Let's get this going. So there's X Active Directory um, resource module. You can do install module X Active Directory. I've already got that done, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. Just slide this down out of the way. And so I can look at my resources in that module and so forth. But I, I don't want to go into that. I want to spend more time on focusing on the. Um, DSC configuration script. So here we go. I've got a configuration called create AD domain with data, which is kind of the difference here. Uh, there's a lot of templates out there for deploying a domain controller with DSC, but this one's actually going to show you a fully populated OU user and group data structure. So what we're going to do is we this is just a standard DSC configuration, and this is the one that came with the Azure resource template that I snagged off of GitHub. Let me show you where that is, by the way. You need to see this place. So out on GitHub, there's a GitHub slash Azure, Azure quick start templates. There are, um, I don't, I haven't counted. I'm guessing dozens, hundreds of these. Any kind of uh, ready-made recipe, you just want to go uh, spin up some environment with multiple servers all talking to one another and happy in Azure without having to do that manually, 
there you go. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, those quick templates right there. One of these is a domain. So that's what I started with. And so this configuration came out of that. And then I had to tweak it up. I had to uh, import the PS desired state configuration default module because V5 complains now if you don't do that. Importing the Active Directory module, the storage module. And we're taking a parameter for the domain credentials because when you build a DC, you've got to give it credentials in a couple places. So now let's get into the actual DSC configuration piece. This is what you came for. So local configuration manager. This is the V4 syntax for the LCM and DSC. And that's okay, it still works in V5. The reason we put it here is because in Azure, uh, when I spin this up, what happens is it's gonna run this whole configuration. It's gonna spit out localhost.moff and localhost.metamoff, and it's gonna configure the LCM, and then it's gonna actually apply the configuration to the local box. And Azure just makes all that happen magically with the DSC extension. So uh, what I did there is I said, hey, continue after reboot because uh, when you do a domain controller uh, promotion here, it's gonna have to take a reboot and you wanna make sure that the uh, configuration continues to apply after that reboot. Uh, I am only going to apply it though. I'm not going to keep checking it out later and then reboot note if needed and allow module overwrite. So uh, when you're spinning up a domain controller in Azure, uh, does anybody know about uh, disk caching with domain controllers? What do they prefer? You don't want write caching, right? You don't want uh, read-write caching on the disk for your database, logs, sysvol, that kind of thing. So you have to, when you deploy a DC in Azure under IaaS, you have to actually create a second disk, a data disk assigned to that uh, VM so that you can turn off that caching. So that's what this is for. It's waiting for that second disk, that data disk to come up in the Azure VM. And that's all handled by the template. I didn't have to do any of that hard work. All I had to do was just uh, edit this configuration. So disk two, and there's a retry interval there that's already defined up here in our parameters for the configuration. So I wait for the disk and then I use the X disk resource to create an F drive on disk number two. That's going to be our AD data disk in Azure. And you could just, it doesn't matter if you're doing this in Azure or not. This is the same thing you would do on your local data center if you're doing this uh, locally as well. So when we're deploying domains with uh, DSC, we have to install the AD domain services, right? So we install the AD domain services and then we run what used to be known as DC promo. Now this is what we call DSC promo, and it's gonna call all the commandlets in the back end to make that happen. So I've installed the AD domain role here. Also, because I like to cheat and use the GUI tools from time to time, I wanna go ahead and put the RSAT for AD DS in there as well. So that's gonna give me my good old trusty ADUCK and um, the AD uh, GUI tools. Center. Right, AD Administrative Center, all that good stuff. So now we're down to actually building the domain controller. And I did, when I did this presentation last year, this is essentially the same kind of stuff, uh, but this was also part of that uh, downloaded template from the Azure RM template gallery. So XAD domain is gonna be my first domain controller. Here's the domain name coming in from the parameters to the whole thing the domain administrator credential and the safe mode credential, because this is just gonna be a quick dev lab, I don't really care uh, that they use the same credentials, no big deal. Now, notice I can specify here the database log and sysvault path. That's kind of important. I'm gonna put that on that F drive that has no caching on it. And this depends on the feature being installed and the disk being available. If those aren't ready, then I don't wanna proceed with building the DC. So that's the dependency there. Make sure that all happens in the right order. And then we're gonna wait for the domain. So what this says is domain controller is promoting here with this resource, and that's gonna take a while. And actually, it's gonna force a reboot. So what happens, the next time that machine reboots, I've got the LCM set to continue configuring. It's gonna run down through, it says, oh, this is already done. And then it's going to check and make sure that that domain, alpineskihouse.com, is responsive. And once I know that the domain is up and online, then I can proceed with configuring the domain. So there's an XAD recycle bin resource. I wrote uh, 
about 14 months ago. So now I can enable the AD recycle bin and it's going to be for the same domain and that obviously I have to wait for the domain before I can enable the recycle bin there. So that's the dependency. So now I've got the base domain stood up with DSC. Now uh, the next part of the configuration gets kind of interesting. So what I want to do is I want to build out an OU structure and put users and groups in there. So here's how I chose to do that. In DSC, we're used to the simple, quick demo configurations, but did you realize that you can actually put scripting and looping in the body of your DSC configuration script? So now we can iterate through data. So what I did was I have this PSD1 data file here, and this is uh, your hash table with your all nodes. Here's the node name localhost, which you have to have in Azure, it has to be localhost. And then this uh, property called PSDSC allow domain user. Notice there's not um, allow, what is the un unsecure password things not there? Because Azure will encrypt the password automatically for me. But this little thing will snag you. Um, on V5, one of the last few iterations of V5, we introduced this safety. So we prefer that you not use domain credentials for the credentials in your resources. And so there's this warning. If you put domain slash username, it's going to flag you that you're trying to use a domain credential in your uh, configuration. So you have to put this in there, PSDSC allow domain user equals true to allow it to use a domain user account, which you have to use in this case. Now this non-node data is just a section, a blob of data that I'm going to use to build out the lab. And here I've got a CSV script block, or script, I'm sorry, a, a string, a CSV multi-line string that has um, comma separated values for username, department manager, and a plain text password there that I really don't care about because this is my lab, all right? I'm not telling you to do this in production. This is just for a lab. So I've got eight users that I'm going to spin up here with the username, their department, and their title. And then I've got my OUs, root OUs, child OUs, and then a test object account. So here are my root OUs, accounting, IT, marketing, and operations. Underneath each one of those four root OUs, I'm going to create child OUs, users, computers, and groups. That's going to be one technique that I demonstrate in how to populate the data inside the domain. The other technique I'm going to use is called test object count. So here I could put five, I could put 500, I could put 5,000. Whatever this number is, that's how many test user accounts and test groups it's going to build and just throw like user one into group one, user two into group two. It's just populating you know, just random data for testing in AD. So this is the data then that's going into my configuration script. So now in my configuration script for each root OU, that's in that configuration data block in the root OUs. For each one of those, I'm going to create an XAD organizational unit, giving it a <laughs> dynamic resource name there. And it's going to use that root OU name. It's going to be in the domain root, which I calculated right here. Domain name is alpineskihouse.com. So now it becomes DC equals alpine, comma, DC equals com. So then my OU path, that's going to be the parent path for that at the domain root. I'll give it a description, <coughs> use the credential that we did already, ensure that it's present, and that's going to have to wait until the recycle bin is done before it kicks in. So now that I've got the root OUs built, it's going to loop through and build each one of those root OUs. After that, it's going to create child OUs under each one of those. So here's my X80 organizational unit and I'm just going to give it a dynamically calculated name inside the configuration here, giving it a child OU, and then the parent is going to be that root OU in the domain root. And in this case, I decided, I guess I did the previously as well, protect from accidental deletion, and then we'll give it a credential, ensure that it's present, and that's dependent on the parent root OU being established, right? So I've got to have the root OU, and then I can create all the child OUs under it. And then finally, as I'm looping through here, I'm building a master dependency array of all the organizational units. Actually, this is going to have all the child organizational units because before I can create a user in the user's ITOU, that OU has to exist. 
So I'm stitching together an array of all the configuration items that are dependencies before I start building users and groups inside those OUs. So that array right there comes down next to my users section as the dependency. It depends on that array of OU configuration items that have to exist first. So now I take my user data out of that uh, CSV. I love doing this in my scripts. I'll just take a big string block and pipe it to convert from CSV and then instantly I've got a rich PowerShell object with all these properties now for first name, last name, and, and a department and all that stuff. So now I can create the new AD user here with the user resource and I give it the domain name I give it the user dot username because now I've got the CSV data. There's the username, there's the title. Now their department is actually the root OU. The root OUs we just looked at, accounting, IT, marketing, operations, that's the department that they're in. So it's going to drop them automatically into the right department. The account is going to be enabled. Now, have you ever tried to enable an account in Active Directory that did not have a password? It fails, right? you have to have a password and one that meets the complexity requirements. So in this case, I have to have a password defined here, which is using the old convert from uh, convert to secure string from that user password that was, again, in plain text. It's in a lab. I don't care. Uh, I never do this in production. So I've created credential property there and the dependency. And now I'm creating a new dependency for the users. So before I can put those users into groups, the users have to exist. So later in my configuration, when I get to the group piece, I'll list all these user accounts as the dependencies before I start spinning up the groups. Now, the other technique I'm going to use to spin up user accounts, just and you could use either one of these, is the test object count. So one dot dot five would be the what the equivalent here is just the uh, the range operator there one dot dot and whatever number comes out of that configuration file it could be a thousand users I'll just go blow them all in there uh, and build them all out and so I'm going to create new ad user one two three four five and give the test username one two three four five and then this one in this case I don't care if it's enabled it's just going to be enabled equals false there is no password specified I don't care for that. And again, that depends just on the recycle being being enabled. They're not going into any OU. They're just going to drop into the default user's container. Then next up are the groups. So I've got that list of root OUs. Those root OUs are the same thing as the department names. So now I'm going to create a G underscore department name global group. That's going to be global security group. Give it a description. And then the members in that group are going to be that user's CSV data. And I'm just using a simple PowerShell filter here where their root OU was the department name for that user. So if we flip over here real quick, we're basically taking this list of department right here for each one of these user accounts. And whichever username matches that root OU, that's the OU we're going to drop them into from that CSV data. And that depends on the user being created before we can actually create the group in that path and populate the users into it. And then the users are dependent on the OU. So there's this nested dependency structure that makes everything happen in the correct order. Then down here is my uh, one to infinity, however many I specify, how many new groups I want, new AD group one, new AD group two, three, four. And then inside there, the member is going to be test user one, test user two, test user three. So I'm just use four each loops and a configuration data PSD one file. So you can take this, take that CSV block, put whatever you want in there for users and parameters and just define and tweak this configuration. Put whatever kind of OUs and users and groups you want in your domain that way. And this whole thing is just, uh, just the script. So it starts out with configuration, create AD domain data, and then when I jump to the very end, that's it. There's no calling code. It's just the configuration block here. And then when the, the Azure DSC resource, uh, the Azure DSC extension, we're going to pass in over here in the JSON file, um, over here, 
Uh, we're going to look for, we called that create AD domain with data. Create AD domain with data. So over here, what we have in the resource, uh, the JSON file, is it says call this script file, create AD domain data, PS1, call that configuration name, create AD domain with data. So in other words, Azure builds this VM, it copies the configuration files inside of it, and then it calls this configuration function name essentially inside that file with that name. And then it finds the resources that they need in this zip file. The zip file is going to have the, uh, the Active Directory, X Active Directory module and that type of thing in it. So that's the, there were some other bits I had to hack up in the JSON file. And I'm intentionally kind of glossing over that part because you're going to learn this piece as well if you decide to, to play with the templates. It's, it's a lot of fun banging your head against the keyboard for two days, but it, you'll get there, I promise. All right. So then in my uh, calling script over here, what I did was I took these files and I copied them from there and I just put them out in my own GoTPFE Azure RM GitHub. This is public and it's out there for you guys to use. So all these files that I'm showing you right now are right here on the screen. So if you go out to github.com slash go TPFE slash Azure RM, you'll find these files and you can use them and tweak them up for your own purposes. You can create a copy in your own GitHub and modify the configuration however you want and tweak a few things and you can start spinning up your own domain controllers all day long or if you're kind of lazy like me, just run this one and just change the domain name. It doesn't have to be Alpine Ski House, you can call it whatever you want. And you can go in and edit things however you like and just make your own. So you've got here the uh, data file, and then inside that zip, you're gonna have the actual script file, the PS1 configuration file, and the, compress and the resources in there. All right, so basically all I'm doing then is I'm taking that data, I threw it up on GitHub, now, really and truly, you should put it in an Azure storage account where it's really secure and you're the only person that can see it if you're going to use this in any kind of production capacity. Um, but all I did was I had to say install module using the uh, PowerShell get to pull down the Azure resource module, install that, install Azure RM, and it goes out and it, it installs like 28 modules for you in Azure RM. And this is all documented out there already. Um, install module Azure, import modules or optional commands, and then I just log in. So really this is where it starts. I log into my Azure RM account. So this is where, um, how many of you have an Azure account? All right, you got a MSDN, you know, enterprise agreement from Microsoft has Azure benefits. You can go get a trial. So as long as you've got some kind of account, you just log in here, that's it. You put in your name and password. In the past, you had to do all the subscription IDs and all this jazz to try to run PowerShell commands against Azure. Now this is all it takes. Log into my account, it knows all my stuff. I don't have to mess with all those extra parameters. And so now what I do is I give it the URL to my GitHub account and that Azure deploy.json file that I snagged and edited out of that uh, template library. And then I just, uh, you can change these up. I called mine go T P S H and then R G for resource group, S A for storage account, and then A D for the DNS name. So you can just tweak up those names right there, whatever you want to call those. They do have to be lowercase. And then you test their availability, make sure there's no DNS conflict there in Azure. And then you just create the resource group. So really what we're talking about to get this all done is three commands. Log in, create a resource group, and then you've got your parameters here pretty well already populated, and then you just do the resource group deployment. So three commands, and in less than 30 minutes later, you've got a full-blown domain controller ready to, to bang on, okay? So those three commands. Now, let's see, is it done? Let's take a look here. It is. So let's take a look at the verbose output here. So here's the play-by-play -play, uh, on building it out. We started at 3.05 p.m. And we scroll down, we saw it's deployed all these pieces. It ends at 3.33 p.m. I've noticed it takes 27, 28 minutes on average for me. 
And then it shows me at the very end, here's my Azure resource group name, and here are all the parameters that we passed in. Here's the VNets, all that stuff. So it's done, it's baked. Uh, I've got a standard D1 Azure VM out there called ADDC. Now, how do I get to it? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this get Azure RM public IP address commandlet and I just give it the resource group name grab the first VM that comes back from that here and so I'm going to grab the IP and the FQDN of that domain controller that I just spun up in Azure. Now the other Azure commandlets have this command called get Azure remote desktop file I haven't found an equivalent of that um, for the RM set of commandlets. So all I did was just do a start process on the uh, RDP client and pass it in either the FQDN or the IP, either one, it doesn't care, that I pulled out of that other information there. So now I'm going to log in here as Alpine Ski House slash AD Administrator. In Azure, you can't use Administrator for your AD name. For your um, administrator account. So in this case, the template said, let's call it AD administrator, and I'm fine with that. And I'll put in my super secret password here, make sure I type that exactly right. Now, this might take a minute connecting into the first time. It's a brand new uh, virgin VM out there in Azure. It might just take a minute before it knocks the cobwebs out of its head and it gets ready to roll. Here we go, it's spinning up. So what you're watching on the screen right now is a brand new, pristine Azure domain controller spinning up for the very first time uh, with an RDP session to it. And uh, here it goes. Let's take a look here. Alpine Ski House, logging in. And now I've been talking this whole time for 37 minutes, but really, when we started this whole thing, I just ran three commands. And now, less than 30 minutes later, I've got a fully populated Active Directory domain controller ready for me to, to script and do whatever I want to do to test so I'm not doing those things in production, right? So I can test now out here on a clean VM. So it's uh, spinning up, and as usual, it's taking a minute just the first time for the server to wake up. So what, what are the things we're looking for now? We want to go see um, is, first off, is the domain controller, did it really work? Did it promote my domain controller? Uh, is the data there? Do I have the OUs, the users and groups? Um, is the recycle bin enabled? Right? I want to see if this thing's actually configured the way we defined it in the configuration. So I'm going to go over here to Tools. First thing you'll notice right here, remember that the Active Directory RSAT we installed in the configuration, the RSAT's there. So now I'm going to go over here to Active Directory uh, let's see, Administrative Center, there we go. And the Administrative Center comes up. I click on my tree view over here because that's my favorite view. I click on the domain. And over here on the right, first thing you'll notice is it's grayed out where it says Enable AD Recycle Bin. It's already done because the configuration told it to enable the recycle bin. Now, right here in the front list, uh, you can see there's an Accounting OU, there's an IT OU, a Marketing OU, and an operations OU, let's drill into one of those. And there we go, computers, groups, and users, they exist. Now in my users OU, there's uh, Debbie and Harriet. And if I look in the groups there, there's G underscore operations, which matches the department name in the OU there. I open that group, and I look at the members in that group, and there's Debbie and Harriet. So I've got an OU, that has a group that has users, users in the group, all with DSC, out of the box. All right, now let's go down and take a look at the user's default container. Down here, I have test user one, test user two, test user three, four, five, test group one, two, three, four, five, and if I look in test group one, there is a member, test user one. What do you think? Does that look handy for you? All right. So we've now, in three PowerShell commands, you run those commands before you go to your morning status meeting. You come back from your status meeting, you've got a domain controller ready to bang on. All right? Just like that. 
And then when we're all done at the end of the day, we've got a couple things here that we can do. Number one, if, if you've been in Azure very long, you've already learned this lesson the hard way, shut down your VMs at the end of every day, right? So you want to run this command, get Azure RM VM. This makes it so easy using the new uh, resource manager command list. Give me all the VMs in my resource group and stop them. Done. They're stopped for the day. Or I can literally just run this one command, remove Azure RM resource group. I want to run that. Bada bing, bada boom. And if I come over here to my Azure view, all my resources, you can see I've got uh, two of these out there. I've got the PSH one and the AD one. I built one just as a fallback last night. But if I keep refreshing this view, you'll watch these resources start to drop off as it deletes them when I'm removing the resource group. And so it's performing that target right then. It's going to remove it, and then we'll be all done. We've got just a couple minutes here. So um, here's your call to action. Help us grow the XAD um, resource in DSC. If you've got a little bit of AD scripting skills, uh, you know, if you don't have any AD scripting skills, just go watch my videos out on Microsoft Virtual Academy. Anybody watch those? There's a full eight sessions, full day of teaching you how to do Active Directory and PowerShell, and then go start uh, hacking away on these resources out there to help us grow the Active Directory resources. Now try it yourself. There's the, the URL, github.com slash gotpfe slash Azure RM. You just go out there. You can uh, download that one calling script file. You can tweak the parameters, the names of things, whatever, and then just run it and you're done. It'll spin you up an environment just like we did right here. You can do it yourself. And then once you've got those files, just start editing and playing with them and make it work for yourself. Question? How did you set the, uh, the host cache on the uh, second disk to uh, read only? I didn't have to. You didn't have to, okay. Because over here in my uh, Azure deploy.json, it does all that for me. Uh, let's see if it actually, it doesn't show that. Let's see if it's got uh, AD data disk and the AD disk size. Uh, somewhere in this long JSON template, it set all that for me. And that's the thing I like about these JSON templates. I don't have to know all that Azure business, right? I just deploy the template and it builds it all for me. Then the day I blow it all away and I don't care. So it's that easy. Yeah. And let's see, we're still deleting that group. And so now, um, one last uh, favor I have to ask of you. Did anybody have to beg your boss to come to this event? All right, like, yeah, I know it's, it's like, you know, funding, travel, budget, conference, all that stuff. Training budgets are really hard to come by. Well, I kind of have to do that with my bosses too. So if you could send me a tweet at GoTPFE and just let me know, was this helpful? Is this something that you're going to use? How can you see some impact in your environment? That'll help me sell my boss on coming back next year. All right, appreciate it. All right, yes. Do you want to copy the emails? Oh, yeah. I'll take a copy of the emails. Thanks. When they come in, I'll send them on to you. All right. So uh, we've got about two minutes left here for questions. Uh, first off, was this helpful? Yes. Yes. All right. Good. All right. So now you've seen what DSC looks like for Active Directory. And on top of that, now you can spin up a domain controller to bang on. Um, now, this is just the, the, icing, the, the scratching the surface here. Um, you can deploy multiple machines with this. Uh, you, can deploy, you can deploy 10 domain controllers and uh, you know, build it all out with uh, different roles and all that. And you can even you know, kick off some other scripts to configure your environment. We don't have resources available yet to set FISMO roles and things like that. So we need help building those. So help us with that. Um, it, yes, question. Is there a similar infrastructure to the Azure RM if you're hosting locally, like on Hyper-V? Is there a similar equivalent set of commands? Right, like, like, got, right, like if you've got, you know, a, temp, uh, a uh, if you if you've got a DSC template that you want to spin up a VM in Hyper-V. For Hyper-V, not necessarily. We have some Hyper-V resources that you might be able to, but you couldn't do it exactly this way. Now, you might check, keep an eye on Azure Stack when that comes out for on-site. You'd have your own private cloud stuff. See if that might work with the Azure RM uh, commands. I don't know. I'm, I can't make any official statements. I don't know what's happened there. Other questions? Yes? Have you heard of anyone using the Active Directory DSC stuff um, for like production systems? 
like for users and stuff like that? I haven't heard of anybody using this much in production systems yet. Um, yeah, you could, it would be kind of one of those things you'd only want to set it once with just the install, right? Um, so uh, apply only for yeah, your LCM, right? Because that's what I, I just offhand had heard somebody, I don't know if it was at, Power, at the summit last year or somewhere else, but someone had said, had referenced Active Directory DSC for like user provisioning and some OU provisioning, group provisioning, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Where it was apply only, it wasn't like, yeah. they were using it to build like right. refresh every time, right? Yeah, you could do that. I was just wondering if it kind of but flow. I just don't know if that's practical. I mean, yeah. you could just run one line of script to create a new user yeah. OU group anyway. Why would you do that with DSC? Yeah. And somebody was asking me this last night, and I thought, well, you know, for me, I'm, I support Active Directory, so all day long I'm standing up AD test environments just to beat on and script against. So for me, this is really handy. I can run this all the time now. And for you guys uh, out there, when you need a, a test environment, you don't have to go through all your VM requests, you know, Active Congress. You can just spin one of these up and then destroy it at the end of the day. So. All right, we're out of time. Thank you all for coming, and please follow you guys. And I also have some business cards up here if anybody wants one. Did you hit the button again?